Today on A Common of the Good MTG, we're taking a look at the shadowy lights of Orzov once again. This one's called Life, Death, and Tokens, which we picked up off of the Aether Hub from that one girl. And uh, so far, it's pretty incredible. If you like the idea of incredible, stay tuned to find out more. <laughs> Hello and welcome to Uncommonly Good MTG. I am your host. Stay tuned to uh, hear the ravings of a madman, Dr. Yukon Socket. Yes, thank you. Film before a live studio audience. Yes, thank you so much. Yukon Socket. Word to your mama. So I'm broadcasting to you from my, say it with me, secret underground headquarters. I heard you. And I'm bringing to you a deck I found over on the Aether Hub, posted by that one girl called Life, Death, and Tokens. So this is an Orzov deck, and uh, so far when I played it, it was pretty sweet. So what we're going to do is we're going to take a look at what these cards do. We're going to talk a little bit about how the deck should probably act. And then we'll take it out and crush some hopes and dreams. All right, so what do we got here? We've got creature kill, creature and enchantment kill. Creature kill, enchantment kill, and artifact kill. Um, plus, he's got she's got some card draw going on there. Pre Non-land permanent kill. Uh, put out some chumps, then glorious anthem. Attack, you'd be equal to the number of creatures you control, and then put out some chumps when you attack. <laughs> Create a food token, lifelink 3 2, and negative x, negative x equal to the number of life you gain this turn. So, some weird strategy there. Uh, Liliana, creature kill, force them to discard as well as yourself, and then um, super permanent kill, kind of weird. Uh, destroy all creatures with mana value 2 or less. If you got the six mana, which we can get to, it's just destroy all creatures. A little bit of board wipe there. Uh, board wipe, creature kill, and then do, you know, samurai babies. Plus one, plus one counters in first strike. Uh, punish them for drawing a card. Benefit yourself for drawing a card. Uh, vampire lifelink babies and card draw. Man, if you can get to the negative seven, the super saiyan ability, it's uh, 13 damage to any target, and you gain 13 life. So suck it. I've only seen that happen once. I've only ever seen that happen once. This guy's been around forever. All right, the end. The end is an incredible card. Exile, target creature or planeswalker. Search for the graver, the graveyard hand and library, and you get rid of everything the same name of what you just did, and you exile those as well. And that's it. Suck it. Suck it. You don't get any. You don't get to play that card anymore. Four mana, man. Uh, in this case, you get to go look for any card. Exile, face down and shuffle. If the spell was bargain, you may. Cast the Exile Spell without paying its mana value. Otherwise, you put it into your hand. So you can pretty much, if you can kill something, a creature or an artifact or an enchantment or a token of some sort, you can go get anything with mana value four or less and just put it right into the battlefield. Otherwise, you put it into your hand. Still, for four, that is an excellent tutor card. Edgar comes out. He's a vampire lord. Gives them all plus one, plus one. We have a uh, people talk about vampires zone. I don't think we have any other vampires in I get, these guys even aren't vampires, despite the fact there's vampires in the pictures. Um, when he dies, he's transformed into a coffin. He does that for three turns while putting down a vampire baby every turn. Oh, that's the other vampire, Soren the Mirthless. His babies will get lorded up. At which point then, Edgar comes back into play on his own. Re just starts the cycle all over again. Awesome, right? Virtual Lord, he puts out a Kniggit, and then if you can get it out for five, at the beginning of your end step, you put a plus a Popo counter on each creature you control, and untap all of those creatures. Swiss Army Knife of things you could do. Usually I use this as a board wipe. Uh, negative three, negative three is a creature kill. And then for seven, at the beginning of your upkeep, you drag a creature from any graveyard into the battlefield under your control. Yeah, man, if you get to seven, this should start winning the game for you. Hopefully it works out. What do we got over here? Pump, pump out a creature. We got a man land. We got um, the ability to go pull things back from the graveyard and the ability to kill something that's attacking or blocking. 
at least do four points of damage to it, right? And so it's a nice collection of lands. That's what we got. So what are we going to do? We're going to control the board by killing stuff, maybe wiping a little bit, just gradually putting our own dudes out, sacrificing or chumping as we need to, and then generally relying upon some pretty powerful cards at the end here to either pump our own guys up, just keep them coming, grinding down our opponent, or taking stuff from their own graveyard and using it against them. Let's hope we got the time and the patience to kill all of our opponents. Or we do, let's say our prayers and talk about what is best in life. Dear Black King Toxroll, who dwells within the dark chambers of my heart, please hear my prayers and grant your blessings as we attempt to crush our enemies, see them driven before us, and to hear the lamentation of the women. All right, we are playing against Tolkien. I, th I thought that dude was dead. Yep. I've never seen this card before in my life. It's very targeting on the permanent it's controller creates a 1 1 white human. Okay. That is like one of the whitest things we've seen in a long time. Anything for two? Nope. All right, three were down. Throwing out a dude. Would you like a glass of wine, sir? This is the set for it. Hey there, Cubert. You want some energon cubes? Ooh, you killed it. Go ahead and draw some cards there, hippie. I expect he's got some killing in him. He's playing mono black. Ooh, that was a weird choice. Ah, he's playing Golgari. And he's been getting nothing but black mana. Should we beseech the mirror? Let's bargain it away. Your sacrifice for the I don't, I don't even know what I'm gonna pull at this point. Normally I'd go for a shoulder, but I already got one out. I'm just everything sounds so good. What has he even got out there? Let's get this guy out there. Hello! Welcome to the battlefield, my friend. I like the fact that he can die. And everything's totally cool. Alright, down to 11. We got another... Another, uh... Chump right there. Chumpy McChumperson. Jump! Suck it! If you'd like to, you can go ahead and draw like uh, five cards. That'd be nice. You know, none of his stuff have toughness of four or greater. They're all. Wienersaurus Rexes. And uh, let's see if we go in now. They're cool. No attacks. Yeah, he's got a bunch of threes, which means that Edgar would die, but I get life gain out of the deal. I'm really just planning on sending in the vampire, baby. 
Flying lifelink is a good way to go. Bump it up. Get yourself some death touch. Oh. Hey, I'll t swap out that guy for somebody else. How does that sound? Land. All in, Sunny Jim. You're just being evil for some reason. All right, I'll take it. Let's go for white. All right, so we got three. We need three for that. We're good. He's got to get a four right there. I have to get rid of a card to kill it. I can just do it. Got plenty of cards to get rid of. Let's do four points of damage. Yeah. I don't think he's got a path forward here. He's hoping I have stuff better than him. I do. What you need is life game, my friend. You got you got green. I don't know what you're gonna get. You can try to get something with reach, maybe? As though that will protect you. Problem is, is it you gotta put out something that's four or less, otherwise this is of no value to you. None whatsoever. I'm coming. Yeah, I know you're just you're like doom scrolling through your deck right now, hoping to find anything. Anything that's gonna help you out. There's nothing there. You're totally screwed. There it is. There's his decision. He's gonna go for an I ain't kill children. Go for the flyer. All right, well, shoulder will kill you then. And we win. In your face, JRR. All right, we're playing against Mantia. Mantia. We got three mana, let's keep it. What are we playing against? A goth fairy. All right, let's just uh, kill whatever he's got coming out next. Kill. Unfortunately, I can't kill that. Aha! Here's my gun drop. All right, we got a 2-2 two -two we got to watch out for now, but I can kill that guy with cut down. And we just win the game. And we just win. 
All right, we're playing against Soren. Two fifty one. Two fifty one. I hope two mana is gonna be enough for this. All right, mono red. Two. And let's shut up that dragon. All right, he's about to put something out. Ah, that thing always escapes my ability to kill it. Ah, oh, watch me get a guy out and not block. Three, Adeline. That sounds fine. All right, so here's a guy we can kill, and we win. We're just taking Mono Red down like crazy. All right, we're playing against... Is this a word? Mad Jew look. Major look. There you go. All right. All right, you did. You got me. Boy, that's everything's three. Okay, there's a there's a two and a one. Ooh. Ooh, look at me. I'm lighting all your flowers on fire. There's Qbert enjoying his energon cubes. Yeah, this guy is a real blazing intellect here. Come on, my man. Choose your cards. There you go, green Tinkerbell. Don't look at your nails. I hate that. I, I told you I ate that. I'll tell you, I'm going to put you on mute. We'll see if you just stand there like an idiot. All right, so let me guess. We're playing against Celesia. All right, two, all done. And nothing for you. All right, so these guys are not enchantments, so that doesn't help at all. What I can is I can destroy all of those creatures with a mana value. I can wait on that. Let's just get some chumps out. Yeah, this is going to go great. He's, he's got lots of guys that have mana value of two or less. If I get up to that six, I could just blow all the dudes away. Let's blow my own guys away. That's the problem. Mana value of two or less. Oh, wait. Ah, this feels so odd doing that. All right, gun drop princess. Here you go. Two guys. I know these guys will both come back to his hand when enchantment is killed. Like that guy. Okay, I got four, not five. Can't play it. Let's just cut this guy down. He'll bring back the other guys.
All right, they're cool. No tax in turn. Can't believe we got to play this way. There's Calyx, the one guy we got to worry about. All right, let's see if we can end up pulling out something cool. We did, we got it. All right, loyalty. No tax. Okay, I'm I'm doing this. I'm racing ahead at this point. Someone's passing out. All I got to do is chump. Chomp. You an enchantment. And we win. In your face, Major Look. In your face. All right, playing against ADL copy. Adol copy. Adol copy. Beep. All right, no to the poop dragon. Nope. Let's start off with something slow. We can play off a 3 3 on the next turn. I'm going to eat it. I'm not going to eat it. All right. Wedding announcement. This guy's just playing control like a... Like a person I don't like. I go draw some cards there, hippie. Looks like he got what he asked for. I think if we get up to seven, we can value persistence our way back in. You know, I hate Siphon Insight. Basically, it says, I'm not going to put together a real deck. I'm just going to go ahead and play somebody else's deck instead. I have no faith in myself. Do I care? I am lifelink. What does this thing say? That's equal to uh, equal to okay. In any way, a two. I see that's the problem there. All right, I'm gonna depopulate. That's what I'm gonna do. I'm gonna depopulate, and you're gonna suck it, and I hate you. So I'm planning on putting out the virtue of persistence. I'll start dragging dudes back from the graveyard, but flying five fire is not going to do too hot for me there. Unfortunately, I've only got 11 life. He's got like he's got to hit me three times now. I 
I got a lot of things to choose from, unfortunately, at this point. From him. It's a lot more for me to grab from with my persistence. That's two shoulders. How are you managing that? Yeah, I didn't think so. Do I not have enough white? No, come on. Why can't I play that? Oh, I got to draw first, that's how. Well, I'm glad it stopped me, because a little Lorena action sounds really awesome right now. Sacrifice a creature! You know what we're going to do? We're going to eat this. That's what we're going to do. Yeah, okay, I'll put another dude out. That'd be fine. All right, he's at 18. We're at 9. All right, that's bad. Well, that's good, because that's going to bring my guy back on my turn. I'll be able to play Liliana. Uh, let's grab our lifelink, or the guy that's going to give us some life. Hopefully this doesn't kill us. Power it too. Still, he's just like, I don't have anything good. I'm going to play your deck. I'm most virtuous here. Yeah, there you go. You know, that was my card, baby. My card. What are you going to sacrifice for it, though? Nothing. Uh, yeah, let's take this guy. He looks face awesome. I don't know what's going on. Fine, whatever. Welcome back. Let's go to town. In, in, in. Come on. I'm clicking. I'm clicking. He's going after my land. And we're shooting this guy in the face. Let's go for that. There we go. In your face, Charlie Brown. Time for you to pee pants. Yeah, okay, I'll take them. <laughs> I'm playing your deck. I'm playing your deck. You know what we're going to do? We're going to kill that guy. And we did it. In your face, copy Tron.
And I'm playing against Great Lion. Maybe 27. Because apparently Great Lion had been used 327 times prior to this. Keep. Uh, let's just uh, let this thing fly. I wish I could kill these little fairies. They're jerks. Especially the pink haired one. How can I not play this? This is a uh, sorcery, that's why, all right. Three. Let's pretend we got something. Alright, that's it for you, huh? I've got a food token. Four. And we win! There you go, Wimpy Lion. Victory! Alright, so here we are with uh, life, death tokens from uh, that one girl. And, uh, it was a fantastic deck. I mean, I got a hundred percent win rate. One hundred percent. I'm not exactly sure why. You know, I just sort of played this deck and kept playing it, and it just kept winning. Um, I'm just not sure. I mean, it's just got a lot of good cards in it. It has a bunch of control. Uh, yeah, the big thing was I think the virtues what made it really interesting. With the way that they would just kind of grab dudes from graveyards and then just kept making everything stronger. There was a lot of really good stuff going on there. Like, I really appreciated Edgar just because I knew that if he were to die, he'd just be pumping out a bunch of bebes and eventually come back on his own. That is always good. The big weird guy I was never sure what to do with was Gumdrop Poisoner. I know you want a player when you gain life. I didn't feel like there was enough life gain going on. I mean, I guess with Shouldred going on, you have the ability to sacrifice that treasure the, or the food to get the, the life gain from that. Just there wasn't a lot of life gain otherwise. I mean, Wandering Emperor, sure, it had some. I, this was just in, it was just a good Orzov deck that uh, that just led towards just I don't know a grinding defeat of your opponents. So many people just potty pants their way out of it though. Mono Red just couldn't handle it. I think it was the fact that he had a little bit of life gain going on. And we were taking out their dudes, and they just couldn't handle it. So it was weird to see them drop so early, but, uh, you know, it became a consistent pattern. All right, so um, let's talk about this. Who was the most valuable player? What card tended to turn the tide of the deck? Uh, I think, let's see. Gosh, I got to look at it here. I got to say, it's probably wedding announcement. It's probably wedding announcement. Um, just because then you start getting your guys out one at a time. And those guys were these little chumps. And of course, he had that glorious anthem afterwards. The other card that I was always looking forward to big, big time was Shoulder the Apocalypse. And by extension, the end. Because the end cost exactly the same as Shoulder the Apocalypse at four. Um, and if even less, you can go pay for even two less. But yeah, I didn't. Oh, no, I'm sorry. Not the end. It was uh, Beseech the Mirror is what I'm talking about. And that one's four. But yeah, you could play this one, and then you, if you bargained it, you can play the four for, you know, you can get it directly into the battlefield, which means you can go get shouldered and just pay it straight out. As long as you had some tokens out, you got some little little chumps you can sacrifice, absolutely it was good. This deck kept coming. It just kept putting dudes out, just not a lot, but enough that your opponents had a hard time getting over that stuff. You know, Mono Green might have trampled it or something. Anything that would put out a big swarm, you'd probably have a hard time with, but even then, Path to Peril was so good at taking him. We only had one. Only had one. But, uh, you know, with Beseech the Mirror, you know how to go grab what you need. You can take care of business that way. All right. So, yeah, my MVP was going to be... What did I say again, was it? It was uh, it was wedding announcement. 
with Shouldred being right in there. I just at four, I have a hard time calling Shouldred the MVP, but uh, you know, Shouldred just does so great all the way across the board. All right, what was the win rate on this deck? Was it competitive? Hundred percent, baby. One hundred. I I think I was probably just lucky. Um, this is definitely a good deck. Definitely a competitive deck. Uh, I bet you if you played it a bunch, maybe you ranked it. It's not going to do 100%. But, uh, man, I was taking out Mono Red like nothing. If you're going up against Aggro, this deck is going to do pretty good against it. Control, maybe you might have some problems. Um, I was going up against uh, things with counter spells, and I just had to weather those out a little bit, And at which point then I was like having reincarnated. Dude, Edgar is so bad. As long as they, they can't bounce him back and then counter him again or something... He just keeps popping it out. He's such a horrible force to overcome. All right, so yeah, definitely competitive. Number two, was this deck fun? Yeah, it was. Um, it had a lot of fight in it. You had a lot of control early on. You were putting out dudes at three. The deck did a good job of providing the mana that it needed to provide to keep you going. Uh, it didn't need a lot. You didn't need a lot. And then, you know, I was able to get Virtue of Persistence and Virtual Loyalty out Pretty much any time the game went on long enough for that kind of stuff. And then you get these guys out, and they start picking up more stuff. Virtual loyalty is cool. It's, I don't think it's enough to win a game. You know, it's one point per dude per turn, and it also turn, makes them into, you know, untapped or whatever. That's great. It's great, but it's not quite enough. Virtue of Persistence by far is the better card, which it, why it deserves that whole seven, because this is an incredible card that just keeps bringing things back from the graveyard. You just don't care if they die because you'll just bring one back at the what the beginning of your upkeep. Yeah, suck it, man. Kill Shouldred. I don't care. He'll be back out. Or she'll be back out. There you go, poor Shouldred. All right, so uh, yeah. And then was this deck interesting? Absolutely it was interesting. You know, I like to think of this kind of being more of an adventure deck because we're playing with those adventure cards. Virtue of Persistence, Virtual Loyalty, and the Gumdrop Princess right there. Um yeah, and then we I mean, we had a lot of Wild of Eldrin cards between Beseech the Mirror, the End. What else is in here? The Stroke of Midnight, which is actually pretty decent for a white removal card. I wish it was Exile, you know, because, uh, you know, if you're trying to get rid of Kami of Transients, nah, it's just a temporary thing. That guy's always going to come back to the graveyard. Stupid jerk. But anyways, a lot of good ones. Um, it was a smooth, smooth deck. It was very orzov -y. Uh, but the, the ability of this thing to pop out creatures was pretty intense. I, I liked it. I mean, it was really good. It was more of a thinker. It was more of a strategy deck. and uh, But still, it had a lot of uh, direct creature kill. And uh, you allowed you to control the board. And it wasn't egregious that way, but still, it was, it was, it was precision. It was surgical. So, um, yeah, if you're looking for that kind of a deck, this is definitely a good one. Let's count it up then. Was it competitive? Yes. Was it fun? Yes. Was it interesting? Absolutely. Which means this deck is an A-plus deck. And as I'm required by federal law to say, this deck is so choice. I would highly recommend you pick one up should you have the means. All right, that's all for now. If you enjoyed this video, please make sure to like and subscribe. From all of us here in the secret underground headquarters of Uncommonly Good MTG, have a great day. See you next time, Space Cowboys. Later.